Greetings everyone, I am Vinita Vaishnav and the topic of my presentation is Privacy Rights in the Digital Age. So, what are these privacy rights in terms of digitalization? Digital rights, also known as digital human rights or internet rights, refers to the fundamental freedoms and protections that individuals should have when using digital technologies such as the internet and electronic communications. These rights are essential in the digital age to ensure that people can exercise their online activities while safeguarding their privacy, freedom of expression and security. These digital rights include freedom of expression, means the right to express opinions, share information and communicate freely online without any censorship except in cases involving hate speech or incitement to violence. Second is privacy, the right to control the personal data and information including protection against unauthorized surveillance, data breaches and intrusive data collection practices by governments and corporations. Next is access to information, the right to access to information and knowledge on the internet promoting digital literacy and equal access to online resources. Fourth is net neutrality, which means the principle that internet services providers should treat all data on the internet the same way without discrimination or preferential treatment ensuring equal access to all online content. Fifth is digital security. The right to secure digital communication and protection against cyber threats including hacking, malware and surveillance. Next is online anonymity. The ability to remain anonymous online when necessary to protect one's privacy or safety. Seventh is freedom of assembly and association, which means the right to form and participate in online communities, social networks and digital platforms without any fear of censorship or prosecution. Eighth is intellectual property rights, means the balancing of the rights of content creators and public interest, ensuring fair use and access to knowledge. Ninth is digital education, which means the right to access quality digital education and resources, bridging the digital divide. Next is digital inculsion, which means that ensuring that marginalized and under-reserved population have equal access to digital technologies and opportunities. These rights are often defined and protected by international declarations and agreements, national laws and evolving social norms. They play a crucial role in shaping the digital landscape and protecting the individual's rights in the online world. Now, why is there any need of these digital rights? So the first one is for the preservation of fundamental rights, which means that digital rights extend the protection of human rights such as freedom of expression, privacy, freedom of assembly into the digital realm in an increasingly interconnected world. These rights are essential for maintaining individual autonomy and dignity. Second one is protection against surveillance, which means that digital rights help safeguard individuals from unwarranted surveillance by governments and corporations. Without these rights, people can be subject to constant monitoring, which can stifle free expression and privacy. Third one is freedom of expression. In the digital age, the internet has become a primary platform for free expression and the exchange of ideas. Digital rights ensures that individuals can express themselves freely without any censorship or fear of retribution. Fourth one is privacy and data protection. Personal data is a valuable asset in the digital world. Digital rights protect individuals' privacy by regulating the collection, storage and use of their personal information. This is crucial in preventing abuse and data breaches. Fifth one is equal access. Digital rights promote equal access to online resources, knowledge and opportunities. They help bridge the digital divide, ensuring that everyone, regardless of their background, can participate in the digital economy and society. Next is innovation and creativity, which means that intellectual property rights, a subset of digital rights, balance the interests of content creators and the public. They encourage innovation and creativity while ensuring that knowledge and culture are accessible to all. Seventh is security. Digital rights also encompasses the right to digital security, protecting individuals from cyber threats. This is vital for maintaining trust 
in digital systems and preventing harm from cyber attacks. Eighth one is human rights in digital age. As our lives becomes increasingly intervened with digital technologies, it is crucial to apply human rights principle to the digital sphere. Digital rights ensure that these principles remain relevant and effective in the 21st century. Ninth is accountability and transparency. Digital rights advocate for transparency in how governments and corporations handle digital data and make decisions that impact users. This accountability helps prevent abuse of power and discrimination. Tenth is democratic values. In democratic societies, digital rights support the free flow of information and ability of citizens to engage in political discourse, making them a cornerstone of democratic governance. In summary, digital rights are vital for upholding the principle of freedom, equality and privacy in the digital age. They ensure that individuals have the necessary protection and freedom to navigate and participate in the digital world while preserving their dignity and autonomy. Next, we will talk about legal protections of digital rights, particularly in India and generally in the world. So in India, the first one is Information Technology Act 2000. The IT Act governs various aspects of digital rights in India, including electronic signatures, digital certificates and cyber crimes. It establishes legal recognition for electronic records and digital signatures. Under Rule 5 of the Information Technology Rules 2011, any body corporate or person on its behalf shall not collect any personal data or information unless it is collected for a legal purpose concerning any functional activity of the body corporate and that collection of such information is necessary for that purpose. Further, the person whose information is shared must be made aware of the fact that the information is being collected the purpose behind it, the intended recipient of such information, the name and other details of the agencies collecting the information and the agency retaining the information. Any corporate body or person holding the personal information of the data subjects cannot retain it longer than the period of its lawful requirement and also cannot be used for purposes other than for which it was collected. The provider of the information has the option to give or not give his consent for data collection and can even withdraw his earlier given consent at any time. The consent is required even for the purpose of sharing information with the third parties. However, no such consent for the information provider is required where the information is shared with the government agencies mandated under the law to obtain information including sensitive personal data or information for the purpose of verification of identity or for prevention, detection, investigation including cyber incidents, prosecution and punishment of offences. However, these regulations deal only with the corporate body collecting and disseminating data. The information freely available in the public domain is not considered within the scope of sensitive personal data or information. The Indian legal system lacks a comprehensive legislation to regulate the collection and dissemination of personal data as there are no specific regulations which govern the processing of personal data which is not per se sensitive personal or information. Next is right to privacy. In 2017, the Supreme Court of India recognized the right to privacy as a fundamental right under the Indian constitution. This landmark decision was held in Justice K.S. Puttaswamy vs. Union of India, led by a nine-judge bench on 24th August 2017, by giving an unanimous verdict affirming that the Constitution of India guarantees to each individual a fundamental right to privacy. However, India has not yet enacted any specific legislation on data protection. The primary enactment which deals with the protection of data are Information Technology Act 2000 and the Information Technology which is Reasonable Security Practices and Procedures and Sensitive Personal Information Rules 2011. The IT rules impose additional requirements on commercial and business entities in India relating to the collection and disclosure of sensitive personal data or information. It included various new rules that requires companies and organizations which process personal information to obtain data owners' right written consent before undertaking certain activities. Previously, 
the IT Act 2000 had undergone certain changes which were introduced by the Information Technology Act 2008 and added Section 43A and 72A of the Act. Section 43A deals with the implementation of reasonable security practices for sensitive personal data or information and provides for the compensation of the person affected by wrongful loss or wrongful gain. The sensitive personal data or information as referred in the provision includes passwords, financial informations, physical or physiological and mental conditions, sexual orientation, medical records and history, biometric information, etc. Section 72A provides for imprisonment for a period of up to three years and or a fine of up to 5 lakh rupees for a person who causes wrongful loss or wrongful gain by disclosing personal information of another person while providing services under the terms of lawful contract. Next is data protection laws in India. So, India introduced the Personal Data Protection Bill in 2019, which aims to regulate the processing of personal data and protects individuals' privacy. Personal Data Protection Bill 2019 was introduced in July 2017 by a committee of experts chaired by Justice B. N. Sri Krishna and was set up to examine various issues related to data protection in India. The committee submitted its report along with the draft personal data protection bill 2018 to the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technologies in July 2018. The personal data protection bill 2019 was introduced in Lok Sabha by the Minister of Electronics and Information Technology on December 11, 2019. The purpose of this bill is to provide for protection of privacy of individuals relating to their personal data and to establish a data protection authority of India for the said purposes and the matters concerning the personal data of an individual. The bill proposes to apply to the processing of personal data that has been collected, disclosed, shared or otherwise processed within the territory of India, which means that by the government, any Indian company or any citizen of India or any person or body of persons incorporated in India and by foreign companies dealing with personal data of individuals in India. Currently, the bill is referred to a joint parliamentary committee after it was introduced in Lok Sabha. Now when we talk about some legal protections worldwide, so the first one is General Data Protection Regulation. It is implemented in the European Union in 2018. General Data Protection Regulation is one of the most comprehensive data protection laws globally. It grants individuals control over their personal data, mandates data breach notifications, and imposes hefty fines for non-compliances. Next is California Consumer Privacy Act. California's Consumer Privacy Act is effective from 2020. It gives California residents enhanced rights over their personal data including the right to access, delete, and opt out of the sale of their data. Third one is Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So, while not a specific digital rights document, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights adopted by the United Nations in 1948 lays down the foundation for many digital rights, including the right to privacy and freedom of expression. Fourth one is International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights is a UN treaty which protects rights like freedom of expression and privacy, which have direct relevance to digital rights. Next one is Freedom of Online Coalition. So this is a group of governments who are committed to promoting and protecting internet freedom and human rights online. It includes countries like United States, Canada and Netherlands. Next is net neutrality laws. Several countries including the US before 2021 have implemented net neutrality regulations to ensure equal access to online content and services. And the last one is cyber crime legislation. Many countries have enacted laws to combat cyber crimes while balancing the protection of digital rights. Thank you so much for your valuable time.